okay now at last we'll study the hormones of adrenal medulla the adrenal medulla secretes catecholamines that is epinephrine norepinephrine and dopamine about 80% of the adrenal medulla is epinephrine okay and the rest is nor epinephrine apart from this it secretes small amounts of neurotensin enkephalin somatostatin dynorphins also okay so these are all secreted in small amounts the main catecholamines are epinephrine and nor epinephrine so this is functionally related to the sympathetic system okay that is it's having innervation from the sympathetic system so when the sympathetic system is activated so then the horm these hormones will be secreted and released into the circulation okay so this is about the catecholamines so now norepinephrine norepinephrine Ep sorry epinephrine and norepinephrine so it's also called adrenaline and nor adrenaline so that this is the normal concentration in the plasma in the circulation that is epinephrine will be 30 picograms per ml of the plasma and norepinephrine is 300 picograms per ml so this is a normal concentration of the catecholamines okay these are not essential for life for example mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid but it helps the individual to deal the emergencies deal with the emergencies so now we'll see how it is synthesized okay so this is the steps of synthesis of the catecholamines so first the tyrosine it will be hydroxylated by the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase so that forms the dopa so dopa this will be converted into it undergoes decarboxylation by dopa decarboxylase it forms the dopamine from dopamine again hydroxylation forms the norepinephrine and norepinephrine will be converted into epinephrine almost the 80 to 90 percent the secreted will be epinephrine so now we'll see how this secretion is regulated that means 80 percent of i already mentioned 80 percent of norepinephrine in the adrenal cortex is transformed into is converted into epinephrine the catecholamines have a off life of two minutes in the circulation so the secretion of catecholamines it is mainly i already mentioned that it is mainly dependent on the sympathetic system okay that is the sympathetic ganglia okay the sympathetic trunk that is from the lower thoracic segments especially t5 to t9 so from here the nerves arises and innervates the adrenal medulla so this nerve supply makes the adrenal medulla to secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine and one more thing one more uh, factor which is responsible for the secretion of the catecholamines or physiological and psychological stimulus that is during stress conditions so any emergency 
conditions the various sensory stimuli associated with the rapid release of epinephrine and norepinephrine from adrenal medulla include any perception or even anticipation of danger or any harm so that releases the catecholamines or any trauma pain hypovolemia hypotension anoxia then hypoglycemia as well hypoglycemia is one of the stimulating factor for the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine or during severe exercise so these are all the factors which are responsible for the secretion of catecholamines when there is sympathetic activity these hormones will be secreted mainly from the sympathetic ganglia thoracic segments t5 to t9 so here the neurons they innervate the adrenal medulla and this neurons so when there is sympathetic activated so this innervates the adrenal medulla this stimulates the release of catecholamines this is one of the factor which is responsible for the secretion and other i mentioned that any stress any uh, stress conditions or any perception of or anticipation of anger pain trauma hypotension and then uh, hypoglycemia hypovolemia hemorrhage so when there is hemorrhage when there is blood loss that is also a condition that is also a factor which is responsible for the secretion of catecholamines and there are selective secretion of catecholamines that is in certain conditions only epinephrine is released in certain conditions only norepinephrine is released for example when your anger and aggressive states norepinephrine will be secreted when you are in anxiety tensed so that condition epinephrine secretion will be more so this is about the regulating factors this is about the regulating factors for the secretion of catecholamines then you should know how the adrenaline acts the adrenaline sorry uh, adrenal medullary hormones that is adrenaline and noradrenaline so this actions of epinephrine and norepinephrine it is also called adrenaline and noradrenaline these acts are mediated through receptors okay alpha receptors and beta receptors alpha receptors are of two types alpha 1 and alpha 2 whereas beta receptors are of three types beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 alpha receptors are sensitive to both epinephrine and norepinephrine whereas the beta receptor receptors respond to epinephrine and in general are relatively insensitive to nor epinephrine okay alpha receptors respond to both epinephrine and norepinephrine whereas beta receptors respond mainly to epinephrine and almost insensitive to nor epinephrine so this is how it acts so it acts through second messenger it's not a steroid hormone so it binds to the receptors coupled to the phosphatidyl inositol membrane system and then acts through the second messengers so this is how it acts okay so now we'll see what are the actions or functions of catecholamines so first we'll see the epinephrine metabolic actions that means what its effect on carbohydrate met met metabolism and what its effect on fat metabolism so on carbohydrate metabolism this is also a glucogenic hormone that means it increases the glucose concentration in the blood so it stimulates glycogenolysis it inhibits glycogenesis then 
it stimulates gluconeogenesis in the liver that's by using the amino acids lactate and glycerol so it stimulates gluconeogenesis insulin secretion will be inhibited so this is a glucogenic hormone then effect on fat metabolism it has more potent action on the lipid metabolism so it causes increase in lipolysis so it increases the lipolytic action in adipose tissues and muscles so this results it actually stimulates the enzyme lipase so there will be lipolysis and general metabolic action of epinephrine general metabolic actions will be it increases oxygen consumption it increases the cardiac output it increases the heat production in the body so it increases the basal metabolic rate so these are all the general effects on the metabolism that it increases the oxygen consumption it increases the cardiac output then it increases the basal metabolic rate and it increases the heat production in the body so these are all general effects so now we'll see effects on the different systems of the body so we'll compare here the effect of epinephrine and norepinephrine especially on the cardiovascular system epinephrine it increases the heart rate and force of contraction via beta 1 receptors so resulting in increased cardiac output and rise in systolic blood pressure so that is the important effect of epinephrine it increases the heart rate it increases the force of contraction of the heart so what will happen there will be increase in cardiac output and increase in systolic blood pressure and this is having the receptors are present in the smooth muscles of the blood vessel so it causes vasoconstriction in renal sp splanchnic and uh, cutaneous vascular blood so when there is vasoconstriction so peripheral resistance will be i'm sorry uh, so it causes vasoconstriction okay so next regarding the norepinephrine it also increases the heart rate and force of contraction resulting in increased cardiac output and systolic pp it it also causes vasoconstriction so receptors resulting in increased peripheral resistance okay as a result of increased spp and dpp mean blood pressure is markedly increased in when there is secretion of nor epinephrine so this thing you should know that is the epinephrine it increases the heart rate increases the force of contraction so it increases systolic blood pressure whereas it in, it causes peripheral constriction in only renal splanchnic and cutaneous vascular blood whereas the norepinephrine increases the cardiac output increases the force of contraction increases the heart rate so cardiac output and spp will be increased and it causes vasoconstriction more when compared to the epinephrine so dbp also will be more so that's why mean arterial pressure will be more in case of nor epinephrine and we'll see the effects on the different systems so what are the effects on gi motility and what are the effects on central nervous system and what are the effects on the urinary bladder what are the effects on skin eyes respiration so all these things we'll see so on eyes it causes dilatation of pupils and it decreases the gastric motility so relaxation of smooth muscles of the gut so that's why it decreases the tone as well as motility will be decreased on cns it activates 
reticular activating system so it alert alert and arousal responses you can see and thus lead to arouse and alerting responses that means it activates the reticular activating system so the p with a subject will be aroused and he will be alert the gastric motility will be decreased eyes will be dilatation of the pupil on the skin it tools the pilo it acts on the pilo motor muscle causing pilo erection of the hair okay pilo erection of the hair and on skeletal muscle okay what will happen it increases the glycogenolysis in the muscle and releases glucose into the circulation i already mentioned that it is responsible for increasing the glucose concentration so what will what it will do it, it inhibits it stimulates the glycogenolysis in the muscle it increases the glycogenolysis in the muscle and releases glucose into the circulation on respiratory system it increases the rate and force of respiration so these are all the functions of these are all the functions of catecholamines on different parts of the body so i mentioned what are the regulating factors in the previously that is one is the neural regulation and the other are the these things stress anxiety hemorrhage hypoglycemia hypovolemia so all these things are the regulating factors for the regulating factors for the catecholamines secretion and you should know one more thing before going to the applied physiology you should know that it's having a I already mentioned that it is not the life saving hormones but these are needed in few conditions for example during exposure to cold okay these hormones are needed because it produces the heat production it increases the basal metabolic rate and during hypoglycemia so these hormones will be released and during exercise during mild to moderate exercise so what will happen the adrenaline secretion also increased so to produce more glucose to the cells so this is about the hormones of adrenal medulla so one more important condition that is the applied physiology that is a disorder of adrenal medulla that is pheochromocytoma it's a rare benign tumor okay rare benign tumor where there is excess secretion of catecholamines so what will be the clinical features one is hypertension okay because of increased heart rate increased cardiac output systolic blood pressure will be increased and then increased constriction vascular constriction so what will happen diastolic blood pressure as well as increase so we'll see hypertension that is one of the important factor and then you can see palpitation that is feeling of one's own heartbeat and then there may be anxiety palpitation headache glycosuria that is these hormones are responsible for excessive secretion of so the, these hormones are responsible for increased plasma glucose concentration okay so you will see glucose excessive glucose plasma glucose concentration so when there is excessive plasma glucose concentration you will see glycosuria so that is one of the important feature and then chest pain abdominal pain vomiting so these are all important features which are present in the pheochromocytoma so when you do some tests okay so you will see increased levels of plasma epinephrine and nor epinephrine that is the test is known as 24 hour urinary excretion of vme so this is about the hormones of adrenal medulla thank you